We begin this news hour with breaking news from Sudan. After nearly two days of fighting between the army and the powerful paramilitary rapid support forces, or RSF, the UN says a temporary pause in fighting has been agreed on humanitarian grounds. The Sudan has seen a bitter power struggle since Saturday when the airstrikes and gun battles began. Now, this has been the state of play. This is where things stand at the moment. Fighting began spreading across the country. The worst of the violence, however, has been centered on the capital Khartoum and on neighboring Umdurman. Both sides have been vying for control of Sudan's state broadcaster, of the presidential palace and the airport, as well as multiple military bases. The army has now agreed to a safe passage corridor for urgent humanitarian cases. However, aid workers are also at risk in all of this. The UN's World Food Program says three of its employees have been killed. The WFP's executive director has released a statement saying, while we review the evolving security situation, we are forced to temporarily halt all operations in Sudan. WFP is committed to assisting the Sudanese people facing dire food insecurity, but we cannot do our life-saving work if the safety and security of our teams and partners is not guaranteed. All right, let's go straight to Hiba Morgan in Khartoum. Hiba, what can you tell us about this pause in the fighting? Has it begun and is it holding? Well, as per both sides, the Sudanese army and the rapid support forces, it's a period of three hours where those who are in need, and let's focus on that, those who are in need would be able to get out uh, of their homes and out of the out of Khartoum city to be able to access facilities such as uh, hospitals and uh, uh, health centers. So it looks like it's very targeted with regard with regards to who can actually uh, get on board on that humanitarian corridor. It's not been specified as exactly where those corridors would be open. And both sides say, said that they do reserve the right to defend themselves should they feel that they're under attack. So it doesn't look like it's something that, uh, that that would hold or would give civilians at least some kind of assurance that they would be able to venture out in the streets. Lots of concerns here. But there's also a bit of movement uh, on the streets of Khartoum. Many people who were trapped here in uh, Khartoum city when the fighting broke out in the early hours of Saturday morning are now taking this time to uh, get out of the facilities they were trapped such as hospitals and schools uh, around the vicinity of the presidential palace and the general command of the army and trying to make uh, their way to safety during this three-hour period that was granted by both the rapid support forces and the army after facilitation and mediation by the UN. So, Hibbert, just to be clear, who is this aimed at? It's civilians who live in or near the fighting, is that right? It's aimed at the civilians who were trapped in areas of fighting, places like uh, schools around the vicinity of the presidential palace, around the vicinity of the general command, hospitals where uh, people could not seek treatment or hospitals where people went for uh, renal dialysis, for example. There have been people who were trapped in such health facilities and uh, medics have been calling on both sides, the RSF and the army, uh, to open such corridors. So these are the people that those corridors are directed for. Again, it's not specified which route they can take, where they can head to. But the urgent uh, uh, issue here or the important matter here is that they should leave the vicinity of uh, the fighting areas, areas such as the presidential palace, areas such as the general command of the army headquarters, and areas where their bases of the rapid support forces, which have been uh, facing airstrikes since the early hours of Sunday morning. Uh, Hibba Morgan reporting live from Khartoum. Thank you very much. Now, let's speak to Khulud Khair. He's the founding director at Confluence Advisory. That's a think tank based in Khartoum. Uh, she joins us from uh, Khartoum right now. Khulud, first of all, your reaction to this three-hour uh, pause in the fighting to allow civilians to get out of the most dangerous areas? I think it's a positive sign that at least the general can come to some kind of arrangement. But as we speak, um, the time frame is meant to be from 4 to 7 p.m. And as we speak, I can hear shelling um, not so far from my house and both light and heavy artillery um, in the background. So clearly, um, one of two things, either the general misled uh, the U.N., which wouldn't be the first time, or they don't have as much control of their troops as one would hope. Okay, that's really interesting because the, uh, this, this temporary, this three-hour pause in the fighting is from 4 to 7 local time, and it's currently 5 p.m. local. 
uh, where you are. You're reporting that there is still shelling going on, so we, we know that the uh, pause in the fighting isn't completely holding, uh, and you mentioned perhaps control of the troops is an issue. Yes, absolutely. I have heard uh, from friends around the city that they have been able to move around to some degree and that some shops are open to allow people to restock. But, of course, there are broader problems. For example, people who are income independent um, are not able to get access to insulin because pharmacies have run out, partly because uh, the uh, airports are closed, of course, because of the fighting. So there are ripple effects. Um, to the broader um, conflict that cannot be uh, ameliorated by this uh, three-hour window. Do you feel safe going out of your house right now, being in the street in Khartoum? Well, considering what I can hear outside of my uh, windows, no, not at all. A great many people will feel that. Certainly on social media, lots of people have been saying that they don't feel safe enough uh, to leave their homes. And I think part of it is also that many people don't trust uh, the, the general to, to, to abide by this. And uh, the, the SRSG, the special representative of the, of the Secretary General, Paul Kassatis, in his statement about the, um, the sort of temporary safety corridor, said that this is a sort of a gentleman's agreement. It's based on trust. Of course, neither side um, uh, is, is sort of um, beyond their word, has given any kind mm. of indication they'll fix by this. But we already know that these generals do not keep to their word. So I think that lack of mistrust means that many people don't feel safe to leave their homes. Where do you see this going? Well, the damage that we've seen from the generals in the past 36 to 48 hours doesn't indicate that they are willing to sort of sit down and end this in, in any kind of permanent way. I think they both have been um, using sort of um, war propaganda, if you will, to try and frame their actions as firstly in self-defense and secondly in defense of Sudanese democracy. And so, you know, agreeing to a, a temporary uh, sort of ceasefire in order to avail safety corridors falls into um, those ploys to, to get to frame their actions as in sort of a humanitarian and, and democratic way. Um, but I don't think that will carry um, much favor or indeed get much traction with many of the Sudanese Sudan citizens who have had to live through the past uh, 36 to 48 hours in, in anxiety and fear. All right. Khulud Khair, founding director at Confluence Advisory in Khartoum. Thank you so much for joining us. Osama Syed Ahmed has more now from Meroe in the north of the country. We've been hearing gunfire of both light and heavy weapons, which was likely to signal renewed fighting here within the vicinity of Merawe Airport. Soon, it all came to a halt, and what remains is the plumes of smoke from the vital installations within the facility, close to its control tower. As you can see, this is the aftermath of the fighting that began a short while ago. The rapid support forces had said they had seized control of the Merawe airport, claims denied by senior sources we contacted in the Sudanese army here in the northern province. They confirmed the airport is under the army's control as the armed forces deal with what they're calling small pockets of rebels, an apparent reference to the rapid support forces.